Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking it out if you're new. So today is opening day for Deadpool and Wolverine and my friends and I saw it and I wanted to share now what I got right, what I got wrong, and just overall thoughts on the movie. Obviously spoilers ahead, so leave if you haven't seen the movie, go see the movie, and then come back and let's talk about it. So yeah, going into this movie, I was really excited. I was looking forward to it a lot. I did get the cup and the popcorn bucket i just got the regular one i didn't get the amc one that one was sold out but i did get the cinemark helmet which i'm excited about and then just the plain old cup and so yeah as you can see very excited for this movie and i actually really enjoyed it a lot like i thought it was fun was it maybe as big and crazy as some of us thought it was gonna be no it was maybe a little more subdued, a little smaller, but actually I think that helped the movie. So let's just go through it using my bingo card here. So right off the bat, we've got X-23 slash Laura. Yes, she was in the movie. We knew that from the trailer, but I still had it on my bingo card anyways. And I thought she served an interesting role in the movie. She unfortunately didn't suit up in the full yellow blue like I thought she might, but she was in, it is Daphne Keene returning to the role, and she does wear an outfit, and she has the claws, and the toe claw, and <laughs> she has some fun fight scenes, she does participate in the final battle, well, second to last final battle, and I did really enjoy the way she was included, where she was almost like the leader of the outcast of the rebellion in the void, and I'll touch on the other members of the Rebellion on a later point in the bingo card. So, then we've got Logan Wears the Helmet. And yes, obviously, <laughs> he did. Well, they wouldn't have made merch of it if they weren't going to have it in the movie. But so, yeah, Logan did finally wear the helmet after how many years? <laughs> he wears it in the last act as, like, a fully embracing it. And I went back and forth on the helmet. The helmet is clearly a mix of like an actual practical helmet that Hugh wears in some scenes and a CGI helmet in others. And it gets a little wonky at times. Like when the very first time he puts it on, it's CGI and I think it looks odd. But it does grow on you and it's cool to see it in action during the fight sequence. I'm not sure about the white eyes, though. The eyes do move like Deadpool's eyes, like they are CGI white eyes. But there were some scenes, like, in the final moments when they go down to the generator and they're talking about which one of them are going to sacrifice themselves to shut this thing off. You know, I kind of wish Logan would have taken the helmet off so we could have seen him emote and react because it's, you know, you can only see this much of Hugh Jackman's face. And so I feel like the performance there was a little bit robbed by the mask. But overall, I was excited to see the helmet. I would be curious to see in the MCU, when the MCU version of Wolverine shows up, if they maybe experiment without the white eyes. Like, I know the white eyes are iconic, but think of, like, with the Batman and how much work and emotion Pattinson gives off with just his eyes and the looks he gives. And so I'd be curious to see what the Wolverine helmet would look like without the eyes. Then we had the TVA are actually bad. And I am gonna check this one off. Obviously it has the little caveat where the entire TVA is not bad. If you've seen other MCU projects, you know that the TVA is now doing good in the MCU. However, in the movie, we're kind of with a rogue branch, a rogue sector of the TVA, which is interesting because Loki Season 2 actually introduced, like, some TVA agents don't agree with the overhaul, with the change to the TVA. And so, we see that Dead Mr. Paradox has his own little branch that he is running that is evil. He still wants to prune timelines, you know. We see in Loki Season 2 that they're no longer pruning timelines. Versus Mr. Paradox wants to go back to those old ways and wants to continue to prune timelines, specifically Deadpool's timeline, which is what kicks off the whole thing of the movie. And I love the opening sequence we get, which is, that bit was in the trailer, but they didn't reveal the funniest joke 
which was Logan's corpse. That <laughs> I I wasn't expecting it. I, it's gonna make people mad probably, but it was all in good fun. <laughs> like in the scene. Ooh, <laughs> In the scene, Wade literally fights off the TVA agents using Wolverine's adamantium bones, which is just a very funny gag. And a really cool action scene set to the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> this next one, a big final fight with the Fox X-Men and Fox villains. Well, this one, I am going to give it to myself. I am going to give myself the check. But it's a little so so. It's a little 50 50 because we didn't get any other Fox X Men except for Wolverine. Wolverine is the only returning X Men character, which at the time I was maybe a little disappointed, but after the movie I thought on it, and really it's because this movie is titled Deadpool and Wolverine. And it delivers on that title. It is Deadpool and Wolverine's movie. Yeah. We all went in thinking it was going to be this big hoo endgame for the Fox universe. And it really wasn't. The way I view this is if Logan is the sad ending for Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, this was his one last chance to come back and get a happy ending, as we see at the end of the movie. So no, we did not get the other Fox X-Men. So instead what they did is they got a bunch of the New Line and Fox Marvel characters, and they created our little ragtag team of misfits. So we had Laura, Daphne Keene's X-23 slash Laura leading the group. Then we had Jennifer Gardner's Elektra from the Daredevil movie and her own movie, which had a very sly <laughs> jab at Ben Affleck about how Daredevil died already, and so she's not that broke up about it because of their real-life divorce. <laughs> and then they had Wesley Snipes as Blade, which I was so surprised by. I could have never told you in a million years because I thought there was a lot of beef with Wesley Snipes after, you know, because he kind of was difficult to work with on the original Blade trilogy, so I was surprised to see him back. And then the last living member of this group, we have, <laughs> shockingly, again, a cameo I would have never thought. We had Channing Tatum as Gambit, and he's doing the funny accent, the <laughs> really bad Cajun accent that you can't understand, and I thought all those jokes were cool. Like, especially when Deadpool was just like, he's saying we gotta go get the helmet. Like, I'm done trying to understand him. And then they also have the really good bit where they're all talking about the void. Like, the void is where unwanted or unnecessary things, you know, things that aren't able to grow, get sent. <laughs> and Gambit makes the joke of he thinks he was born in the void, you know, because that project never escaped production hell. It never got made. <laughs> also, I love... That Wesley Snipes has a joke here where they're talking about, like, the, oh, this bazooka belonged to the Punisher. And Deadpool's like, oh, which Punisher? There's been, like, five of them. Because there's all the, like, direct-to-DVD Punisher movies. <laughs> and they're like, it doesn't matter. But there's only, there may be a mil there's a dozen Punishers. But there's only one blade. And then Deadpool literally looks into the camera because we know that the Mahershala Ali Blade movie is stuck in production hell and very well may never be made. <laughs> we know that Magneto was a part of this resistance at one point, but he died, which Deadpool makes the joke of like really out of budget, which like I said, disappointed at first, but once I realized like this is Logan and Deadpool's goodbye to the Fox universe, I was okay with it. And then, shockingly, we had Chris Evans as the Human Torch. Yes, not returning as Captain America, but instead returning as Human Torch. Which, I love those two Fantastic Four movies. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know they're not perfect, but I grew up with them. I find them so fun. I've thought about talking about them here on the channel. So it was really cool to see him, you know, flame on and do it one last time. Though I thought it was really weird that they had him fight Pyro, because, I don't know, maybe you could say Johnny is just so brash and bullheaded that he didn't realize it, but I was, what are you, the Human Torch, going to do against Pyro, who can control fire? <laughs> and so, that was 
a bit of an anticlimactic action sequence for him, but he does get a really funny death where he's Cassandra Nova literally just like flicks the skin off of him. So I'm going to give it to myself. Was it a big final fight with the Fox X-Men? No, but it was with the Fox heroes and the Fox villains. And so I'm going to give it to myself here. It's my video, my list. I can do what I want. All right, then I've got Blake Lively as Lady Deadpool. Again, another one that, yes, I got it right. We see the Deadpool Court, which is a bunch of Deadpool variants who live in the void. <laughs> and they consist of characters like Lady Deadpool, Kid Pool, Head Pool, Cowboy Deadpool, to Deadpool 2099, like a million different Deadpools. Well, there's only a handful of unique ones, and then the rest are just in standard Deadpool costume. And I thought their fight scene, that's the final fight scene of the movie, is going up against all the Deadpools, because they work for Cassandra Nova. <laughs> I thought all of the Deadpool variants inclusions were pretty good. Like, it felt maybe a little tacked on there at the end, but I understand you had to do it. You had to have one big final fight. And it gives Logan and Wade a group of enemies they can just slash without consequence, seeing as they all regenerate. Except for Nice Pool. There's one variant where he's like the perfect Deadpool. You know, he just looks like normal Ryan Reynolds with like a big long blonde wig. <laughs> And he pops up throughout the movie, and he's constantly nice until Wade finally uses him as a human shield and realizes that this Deadpool doesn't have cancer and therefore doesn't have his regenerative ability. And so Wade ends up accidentally getting him killed. But yeah, that, all of that rambling to say Blake Lively does the voice of Lady Deadpool, who leads the Deadpool corpse. <laughs> We don't ever see her take the mask off. I'm sure it's not even Blake Lively in the suit itself. She simply stepped into a recording booth and recorded the audio. But it was a fun little detail. <laughs> it was like, oh look, that's Ryan Reynolds' wife. Alright, next we've got Deadpool and Logan accidentally travel to one of the non-MCU universes. Wow. <laughs> I was very wrong with this one. Because, you see, they don't even really go to the MCU. Only... Deadpool goes to the MCU at the beginning of the movie, which I'll talk about in a moment. But I thought they were going to be jumping universes and going crazy with it. Because before the movie came out, they did show, like, in a visual dictionary in a book or somewhere, they showed that Cassandra has the sling ring that she uses to exit the void at the end of the movie. And I was expecting them to use that sling ring to go everywhere <laughs> but they ended up not like they just went to the fox universe and to the void and that was it that's all they used it for so i was totally wrong there <laughs> this next one i'm giving it to myself this is wolverine versus hulk do we get an all-out fight no it's just a quick little glimpse we see the Hulk from behind. We don't even see what his face looks like to know which Hulk. It, like, it's the MCU Hulk. It's going to be Mark Ruffalo. But there were some people who thought maybe it'd be Ed Norton. But we don't see his face. He smacks Deadpool off, <laughs> off screen. And then uh, that's it. But it's implied that because Deadpool makes a remark... When he's hunting, because at the beginning of the movie, he's hunting Wolverine variants. Because, like I said, this movie really makes it about Wolverine and Deadpool. They may say that Logan is the anchor being for the Fox universe. Which means he's so important that without him, the timeline collapses. So, because Logan died, the universe is now dying with him. And so Deadpool goes jumping universe to universe, finding different Wolverine variants. And they're fun gags. Like There's one that's supposed to be like the comic accurate, you know, like 5'3 Logan. That is just Hugh Jackman that they just like click and dragged <laughs> and shrunk him down. And then there's another one played, another crazy cameo. Like, the cameos are interesting, but they're not, like, I thought this was just going to be cameos the movie, as you can see from the bingo card. But no, it's not. And so I... 
And so as he's jumping, he runs into a Henry Cavill <laughs> Wolverine, who is way too damn big to play Wolverine. Like, it was funny to see him, but I, yeah. And I like the joke where they say, we'll treat you better than those guys down the street, you know, because he got screwed by DC how many times during all of that kerfuffle. But so then, yeah, one of the one of the last few universes Deadpool visits, he drops by. Logan's wearing the classic brown and yellow costume from the comics. And Wade even makes a remark of like, oh, didn't you fight the Hulk? And then who comes up behind Wade? <laughs> but the Hulk who smacks him off screen. So I am going to give myself this one. Next one, we've got the X-Men theme plays. And... I don't believe I heard it. I'm not going to give myself it. Maybe it played and I just missed it in all the excitement and action and fun. But yeah, no, uh, the X-Men theme doesn't play anywhere, surprisingly. Like I said, I went into this movie thinking it was going to be very meta and poke all sorts of fun at the flaws in the Fox X-Men movies and make fun of them and talk about how bad they are and they can't wait to be in the MCU. But it was actually... A love letter to the Fox movies. They highlighted the strengths, the things people liked about those movies. And so, yeah, no X-Men theme here. And next up, I've got Do You Know What Happens to a Toad? This is, of course, in reference to the famous line at the end of X-Men 1. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? Same thing that happens to everything else. <laughs> Which that final line doesn't make any sense in the final movie because they cut the scenes earlier where Toad is antagonizing Storm and asking her, like, oh, what would happen if you hit, hit a tree with lightning? And, you know, it would explode. Oh, well, what would happen if you hit a shark with lightning? Like, he's just naming stuff. She answers, you know, it would get electrocuted, it would explode, it would get electrocuted, stuff like that. And so then, then at the end of the movie, she's supposed to hit him with the, you know, what happens to a Toad when it's struck by lightning. Same thing as everything else. Bah! <laughs> but... Uh, in its current form, it doesn't work. And so I thought I was expecting... Again, I was expecting more meta humor in this movie where they would make a joke about, you know, what happens to a toad when it's shot in the head or when it gets its head cut off, you know, same thing as everything else. But they just... And this is maybe a grief I have with the movie of the Fox villains are here just to be fodder, just to look at. You know, I don't even think Azazel says anything. I know Lady Deathstrike doesn't say anything. The Juggernaut is here, and he's played by a new actor because the original actor wanted to be paid more, and they declined his offer. So they recasted the actor. He's wearing the Last Stand outfit, which you can just chalk that up to. He is a variant. You know, he's similar enough that he's wearing the same costume, but he's a variant. But anyways, my beef with all of the ex-villains comes from this joke about Toad where they don't, they're not really, they're just there to be goons and that's it versus I thought they would get more acknowledgement. Like Pyro has his handful of lines and then he gets knocked out and killed and that's it. And then Toad does like the one Toad thing when he uses his tongue. To turn on the giant magnet. Which that was also a good one. The fact that they use a giant magnet. To catch Wolverine. And it pins. You know. Him and Deadpool to the magnet. Was a funny bit. It got a chuckle out of me. Because I mean. Did, uh, the, that weapon would only really work. On Wolverine. Yes no. So yeah. I wish the villains had maybe been played up a bit more. The Fox villains. They weren't even really acknowledged by Wade. Like, I feel like this movie had the least amount of fourth wall breaks or meta references. Which I guess you could say is because Wade's kind of in serious mode in this movie. You know, he's off to go save his universe from being pruned by the TVA. So he doesn't have time to be pointing out and making fun of Toad. <laughs> but it didn't happen. Cassandra was pruned because she's not Charles. I thought they were going to just make it that she was a variant of Charles. They did not. They actually did go with her comic origin of she is Charles's evil twin who <laughs> they fought in the womb. And I thought Cassandra was interesting in this movie. She was nothing too crazy or special. 
you know, nothing that's going to change your world or change your mind. <laughs> but she was fun. She was a fun villain. She's just here. Basically, she's just wanting to be left alone in the void. She just... She got pruned by the TVA because basically they make it sound like it's just because she's so powerful. And so they prune her and send her to the Void where she rules pretty much as the queen of the Void. Like she's the one in charge of all the Fox villains and she's the one the Resistance is fighting over. But yeah, she wasn't pruned because she's Charles, not Charles. She was just pruned because she's so strong. Like, they did keep her comic origin. And I loved that they did the finger things. Like, she does do that in the comics. And it's gross and weird in the comics. Like, when I was first reading E is for Extinction, I was like, what is she doing? And it is, like, yeah, she physically does have to, like, touch your mind. And so, it was a cool, interesting little effect she did. Oh, man. <laughs> I am... Not on a roll here, am I? Because now we've got a Kevin Feige cameo. And unfortunately, no Kevin Feige in this movie. Instead, we got Jon Favreau playing Happy, which could have been Kevin Feige. Like, I don't know why they did I guess they didn't want to get too meta with it. Like I said, this is the least meta of the Deadpool movies. The other two are way more fourth wall breaky and meta with it. The movie, one of the first scenes we see after the TVA forest fight scene is Deadpool on 616, the MCU Earth, where he has traveled using Cable's time band. And he is talking to someone. We don't see him off screen. He's talking about wanting to join the Avengers. And I'm like, oh my goodness, it's going to be Kevin Feige. And it's Happy Hogan. And even Deadpool jokes about, like, why is it you like he does get meta with that of like why am i talking to tony stark's bodyguard <laughs> like are you are you in charge of the avengers now <laughs> i too asked the same question deadpool that being said happy also does give deadpool like his whole mission mantra for this movie where <laughs> he tells him you know deadpool's like i i need to join the avengers i need the avengers and happy tells them like the Avengers don't do it because they need to. They do it because people need them. And, you know, Logan realize And that's, you know, what Wade is doing the entire movie. Is he's doing this for his family, for his friends. You know, he's not doing it to save himself. Because actually, the TVA does offer him, like, you are unique enough that we will let you go to 616, to the MCU. But all your friends and family will die. And so then, that's what Wade is fighting for the entire time. He's fighting for the people who need him. And so I did think it was nice. Like, this movie, I keep saying it's a conclusion for Wolverine. It's also almost a semi-conclusion for Deadpool. Like, I am curious where they go with this. Especially because Ryan Reynolds has said in interviews that he does not view this as Deadpool 3 this is Deadpool and Wolverine. Kind of a spin-off slash in-betweener. And so, I am curious if we'll ever get Deadpool 3 in the MCU. We know Deadpool and Wolverine will definitely show up in Secret Wars if that movie ever gets made. Which, speaking of, we then have... I said Deadpool will land in the MCU without Logan. So, I thought either on purpose or by accident, Deadpool would end up in the MCU... And Logan would be stuck in the Fox universe. But they actually end the movie with both of them in the Fox universe. Like I said, this movie serves as the happy ending for the Fox universe. Which, honestly, they deserved. After getting cancelled and delayed and it ended up... The New Mutants was the whack, lackluster finale. This was a good send-off for the Fox X-Men universe. And so, honestly, I'm glad that Deadpool, this prediction, didn't come true. Because it would have been sad like to have Wade go off to the MCU, leaving everybody behind. I don't know what I was thinking, putting it on here. <laughs> Ooh, woof, this one's... Uh, yeah, woof. 
I have the Fox X-Men in comic costumes. And we know this didn't happen. Because, like I keep saying, this was Deadpool and Wolverine's movie. There are no other Fox X-Men. Except for Gambit. Gambit, played by Channing Tatum, is in a comic-accurate costume. Maybe to a fault. Like, I, I doesn't look that good. Uh, take notes for the MCU X-Men. Because, I don't know, like, the chest piece was too shiny and, like, stiff looking for me. But I did think he looked cool. I thought his powers were cool. And we did get Logan in a pretty accurate costume. As accurate as I think we're going to get, at least, where Marvel is right now. Especially once he put the mask on. So, you know what? I'm going to give this one to myself. Just because, as you can see... I did not do too hot on this bingo board. So I'm going to give myself the check, the approval, and we're going to move on. Because then we've got an Avengers cameo. This is, I said in the previous video, either all of the Avengers or just one. And I am going to count the Thor cameo that we see in the TVA. During Deadpool's visit to the TVA in the first place, we see that he is shown, like, what you could be. You could be a great hero in the MCU. And they show a scene where Thor is cradling Deadpool's dying body, and he's crying over him, and that's where Wade's like, wait, is that... Thor, and it recurs throughout the whole movie. Every time Wade falls asleep or gets knocked out, he wakes up and like, Thor! Thor! And he keeps doing it, and it's funny each time. I question if it was real footage they shot, or it almost, to me, I questioned if it was reused footage from Thor the Dark World when he's holding Loki as Loki dies so i'm not sure if it was totally new footage but i am going to count it as an avengers cameo and then i had classic and or wild sentinels of which we got neither <laughs> we got a leg of a days of future past sentinel and that's that's about it no sentinels in the void apparently and i just continue my losing streak with the john ham as mr sinister reference this is similar to the Gambit cameo? I questioned if they would throw in a John Hamm as Mr. Sinister reference, but they didn't. Instead, they went with Gambit, which honestly was the better choice. I get why they did the Gambit instead of Mr. Sinister, because more people know who Gambit is than Mr. Sinister, but it would have been nice, like I said, even if he was just a poster on the wall. Next up, we've got Cassandra Nova controls Eliath. And I think I'm going to give myself this one. It's not really. She doesn't control it like I thought. Like, I thought she was literally going to be using her telepathy or her telekinesis to control Eliath. Instead, she controls Eliath through his diet. <laughs> she feeds him any of her insubordinates. And so she controls him in the sense of he's constantly coming back to her for a meal. <laughs> So I am going to give myself this one. I thought Elias was going to be a bit more of a problem in this movie than he was. Like, he was just more of an inconvenience. Like, the, he shows up when they first arrive in Cassandra's base, and they escape on the Sentinel leg. And then, during the big second-to-last fight, he shows up at the end to eat everybody, and that's when Wade and Logan go back to the Fox universe. All right, and then we've got X-Men Origins, Deadpool versus Deadpool. And this one didn't come true either. I did not do too hot on this bingo card. But I am surprised this one didn't because we had the whole Deadpool Corp. We had like the Legion of Deadpool. <laughs> Boy, the, they literally have a big fight scene where it is Wade and Logan versus an army of Deadpools. And I'm surprised they did not take the opportunity to slide in an X-Men Origins Deadpool to either fight either Wade or Logan. Like, you could have had Logan like a, oh, not this again. Or you could have had Wade, you know, remark of like, even this guy? And 
they could have been like, no, we don't really like him that much. <laughs> but they didn't have X-Men Origins Deadpool at all in the movie. I've also seen some people theorize that, like, Headpool is supposed to be X-Men Origins Deadpool, but we never see that or hear that explained anywhere in the movie, so I'm not counting that, at least now. If somebody's confirmed it somewhere, let me know. And then I had a Stan Lee or Rob Liefeld reference, and this was in the trailer, but we do get at least a Rob Liefeld reference. There's probably more references and cameos I missed, because in the final fight with all the Deadpools, Wade and Logan get knocked into a shoe store that is Liefeld's just feet. <laughs> Which, if you don't know, Rob Liefeld is the creator of Deadpool and is famously known for not being able to draw feet. Like, he often crops them out of the frame or they're very misshapen. <laughs> Which, I ain't even gonna give him slack for. I can't draw for anything. <laughs> so, oh, drawing's hard. So that was the only big reference I noticed. I'm sure there was little stuff I missed. Oof, and then we've got my massive downfall with this bottom row. <laughs> Alright, so we've got Walker Scobell as Kid Pool. This one was wrong. I know that Kid Pool is way too little to be current Walker, but I thought maybe they would voice over and dub it. But it turns out Kid Pool's actually a little girl. Like, they make some kind of remark where they're like, she's actually, like, the foulest or meanest of us. <laughs> and so, I thought Kid Pool was a fun little inclusion. It wasn't Walker Scobell, but she was a fun little cameo, you know. The Deadpool Corp didn't necessarily play as much of a role as I thought they would, but... It was a cool action scene, and Kid Pool kind of disappears from the final fight, because I'm sure they didn't want to show, unless I just missed it, they didn't want to show, you know, Logan and <laughs> Wade killing this kid, even though they all regenerate and get back up. But the Wade and Logan versus all the Deadpools fight was really fun, because it also just reminded me of, there's a bit where they go through a butt, like it's all like one long panning shot down the street like obviously it's assisted through digital shots and things like that like it's not a true one shot i'm sure unless it is i could be wrong but there's a bit where they get the deadpools are driving a bus and logan stops the bus and gets in with his claws and the bus drivers, you know, oh, no, no. And, I don't know. It was a funny little gag. I really liked that fight. It was a fun final fight. <laughs> and then I had MCU Wolverine. This is where, like I said, this one was a bit of a long shot. But I thought maybe we'll get a glimpse at our future Wolverine in the MCU. Kind of thinking this one would tie also with the Deadpool lands in the MCU. But neither of those happened, and frankly, it was for the better. Like I said, this is Hugh Jackman's Logan and Ryan Reynolds Wade's movie. It is their two characters' movie. It's to celebrate them and the Fox universe. In fact, it celebrates the Fox universe so much that the end credits have a beautiful montage that almost made me cry, even though I don't even really like the Fox movies that much. But... It had a whole montage of all, like, the making ofs from the very first X-Men in 2000 to all the other X-Men movies to the Fantastic Four movies, even 2014's Fan Four Stick. Like, it was just a nice love letter to the franchise. Like, rest in peace, 20th Century Fox, who was also in the void, as you've seen in the trailer. Again, would you prefer black leather? This is a joke referencing the line that Cyclops has in the first movie where Logan's complaining about the outfits and he's like, what would you prefer, yellow spandex? Again, none of this happened. Nobody even questioned. Well, they do question Logan's suit. Like, Wade says, like, the, oh, you finally wore the pajamas after 20 years. <laughs> and then... Logan explains to Laura that the reason he's wearing the suit is because now that we learned that in his universe, the X-Men died while he was gone. Like he was off on a bender getting drunk 
while the, he says humans came and killed them. My mind went to like the friends of humanity because what other humans could kill the X Men, and so yeah, he wears the suit in remembrance of them because he never wore it while they were alive, which I thought was interesting because frankly, that's true. That's all we saw. We only ever saw him in that white tank top or black leather, so I love this costume. Then again, another miss. I've got Wade jokes about Logan's bad love triangle, Jean. Not a single mention of Jean other than Logan listing her when he's listing the X-Men and the people he cared about. Uh, again, a little lack of meta humor this movie, which you could say is because Wade is being serious here. Like, at one point, they have a fight in the Honda where, you know, Logan blows up on Wade and he talks about how he's such a loser and everybody's gonna die. And it, like, actually hurts Wade's feelings. And then Wade is like, I gotta fight you now. And their fight scene in the Honda is really cool. Like, they're throwing each other out the window. They're throwing each other out the sunroof. They're smashing each other against the seats. They're stabbing. They're shooting. They're... <laughs> having fun and they go at it all night long like there's a shot where you know you see it go from night to day to day again and <laughs> they have messed each other up and to the point of that's where laura stumbles across them and takes them back to their base and speaking of laura and the other cameos we've reached our last point on this list and that is taylor swift as dazzler <laughs> didn't happen. I don't know why I thought it would. That It was crazy. Looking back on it, why would she be in this movie as Dazzler? But at the same time, like, it all did make sense. She's friends with Sean Levy. She's friends with Hugh Jackman. She's friends with Blake Lively. She's friends with Ryan Reynolds. Put her in the movie. But she's busy, they're busy, and where would Dazzler have even fit in this movie? <laughs> like... Unless you have her part of the resistance, which, what's she going to do in a fight? <laughs> so, yeah, didn't happen. I get an F. <laughs> I tried. I did not predict this movie very well. But, like I said, I actually did really enjoy it. Like, it's probably the weakest of the three Deadpools. But even that being said, it's still better than most other X-Men movies, like, I did really enjoy it. I had a fun time with it. I went and saw it with friends, which also made it better because we all laughed at the jokes together. I got my popcorn bucket and my cup, which the other stuff was sold out. The AMC bucket was sold out. The AMC cups were sold out, but I got these at Cinemark. But yeah, just a fun movie full of Easter eggs and cameos. But at the end of the day, it was a heartfelt story about... Wade and Logan fighting for their happily ever after, which they do get. Like, I love that this movie closes on Logan and Wade and Laura sitting with all of Wade's friends and family and just sitting around the table enjoying themselves and having, like I said, their happily ever after, their goodbye to Hugh Jackman and hopefully not goodbye to Ryan Reynolds, <laughs> but... We'll, of course, see them both in Secret Wars. Like, I was waiting for that little teaser slash Deadpool to break the fourth wall on that, too. Because before he invites Logan to come with him, it looks like Logan's going to go off alone again. And Wade asks him, am I ever going to see you again? And <laughs> Logan goes, no, probably not. <laughs> That's when I thought Wade was like, I'll see you in Secret Wars. <laughs> but they don't do that gag. Instead, they have Wade stop Logan and they go have dinner together. They're friends. They're friends. Logan has a family now. Wade has a family now. And they both get, like I said, they're happily ever afters. So yeah, those were my thoughts on Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm sure I missed some things. I know not everything because my bingo card was so inaccurate. I tried to tie things in and speak about random bits of the movie. I started to ramble. I tried to tie things into the bingo card. 
But overall, those are my general thoughts after one viewing of the movie. I definitely need to go see it again. I'll probably go see it with some other friends. Maybe I'll go by myself. Who knows? But like I said, if you've seen the movie, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below. If you liked what you saw here and want to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when the next one's coming. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.